Hi guys, my name is Chrissy Anglicker and I'm here in my studio in Brooklyn, New York. And I'd like to share with you some insights into my painting practice. More specifically, I'd like to focus on my relationship to my medium of paint. This relationship is really at the core of my entire practice as an artist. And I've also been learning to make space for paint's natural vocabulary to occur within my painting practice. I consider paint and me equal collaborators. So when I'm painting, we're painting the painting together. So there's a reverence to the paint, there's listening, there's looking, there's paying attention, and there's a lot of um, letting go of control. So there is a whole element of um, a balance between control and chaos. I'm gonna take you into my painting setup and I'll tell you a little bit about the materials I use when I work. So here's a pre-stretched canvas. I did a sketch with charcoal and hit it with some fixative. So this is all ready to go. These are my favorite paints, um, Utrecht acrylics. And I've been painting with these for 10 years now, which is crazy. These are the Studio Acrylics line. So I use a lot of paint. I feel like with this um, line, I get a lot of bang for the buck, but I also um, sprinkle amongst them the artist colors because these um, have a little bit more pigment. And so with some of the really deep, rich colors, I like to have more pigment and then they like really radiate. Sometimes I paint with brushes, but actually I don't think I will today because I, I will be painting with spoons. And so these are just basic um, soup spoons that you get if you order delivery. And I actually have a little bit of an ecosystem going in the studio. So whenever I paint with spoons, I let them, I lay them out, I let them dry out, and then I can just peel off the paint and reuse them again. So the reason why I sometimes paint with spoons is because it takes away some of my ability to control my medium. And what I've been talking about, you know, with getting into a dialogue with paint, it's all about creating space for paint's natural vocabulary to come through. And the only way to do that is if I'm not completely controlling what the paint wants to say. So now I'm gonna try to show you what I mean with having and being in dialogue with paint. So first thing I do is, you know, I'm gonna be in control and I'm gonna pick the colors that I want and but I'm doing it with a spoon and dipping it in so I can't really control as much how much paint is going to be mixed together. So something like this. And so now we're going to see the dialogue happen. Okay, so so see what happened here. I picked the colors. I picked where I was going to place the paint, but I couldn't really control how much of the pink would come out, how much it would marble. And so here's the moment where I need to sit back, pay attention to what paint did. So I made the mark, I made choices, and then paint had its own mark, which is in the marbling, which I can't do on my own, like paint is doing that. And now I have to take a moment to have an opinion about it and be like, okay, I feel this or wait, this is too much, too little. And then based on that pause and that reaction and, and acknowledging paint's vocabulary, I now go back, get more colors and then respond to the paint. And then the same thing happens over and over again. So there's equal collaboration in the spark. There is enough room for the paint to do its own thing, its own movement, while I'm making the calls where I'm placing the paint and what my intentions are. And 
the back and forth, the dialogue keeps going like this back and forth until the painting is worked through. And here we have some of this beautiful wildness that the medium brings and adds into this collaborative effort of painting. You never really know what you're gonna get at the end, but it's the, the whole focus though is about um, the process itself and about being open and leaning in and also learning from the unknown, learning from marks that you didn't plan or didn't anticipate.